Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is the third part in a series of videos looking at my experiences with the Sony A9, which I currently don't have, but more on that later. And this part of the series will be looking at what other systems I looked at and discounted and the reasons why, because as you could probably imagine, it took quite a while to decide on the Sony A9, and I'm still not 100% sure that that was the right choice, especially owing to my recent woes with the camera, but I'll discuss those in a subsequent video. So let's get on to the subject of this part in the series. Let's just have a quick look at what other options I considered, because like I said, it's taken me several months to decide on the Sony A9, and I've gone back and forth over the other options available in my budget before I settled and resettled on the Sony A9. So I'll just quickly touch on the ones I did look at and consider. So obviously I looked at the Lumix S5 and the S5 II, but ultimately, even though I like the fact that they have got some Micro Four Third smarts on the cameras, they, they allow you to shoot in the X-Pan format as well. And the kit lens, the 20 to 60, looks really interesting to try some wide angle photography but but ultimately I just didn't have the confidence that the autofocus system would be able to meet one of my main needs in a camera at the moment. I touched on it earlier as well and also considered the Canon R6 but um, I feel because of the lens situation and the fact that it's got an articulating screen rather than a tilting and it's only 20 meg rather than 24 and the fact as well that the burst modes were subject to rolling shutter, whereas the rolling shutter on the Sony A9, I didn't mention it earlier, but because of that stack sensor design, it doesn't really suffer from rolling shutter. The cameras with more conventional sensor designs in them, like the Canon R6, can suffer with. So yeah, I did briefly look at the Canon R6 II, but again, it's still got the same problem with the lenses and it was a bit above my budget at present. I discounted Nikon, the mainly probably the Z6 II, probably because, again, I don't think the lens options are as good as the E-mount system, or well, they might be good, but there's not as many to choose from, so you're limited to just a couple manufacturers. And also, I don't think their autofocus system is as good as Sony's or Canon's for that uh, autofocus tracking of wildlife dogs. Again, I'm sure you could probably capture it, but I just want an easier life at present. And probably the last one I considered was sticking with Micro Four Thirds and getting an OM system OM1 to try, because I know it has more advanced subject detection and autofocus, as is proven with its wildlife capabilities. And like I said earlier, like some cameras do have some really good detection systems for tracking lots of different subjects, but that doesn't necessarily translate into actually locking on and acquiring focus when you actually want to take the picture. Whereas I haven't really seen much bad reports in that regards on the Sony A9. So yeah, so even though I'd, I'd still be interested to try an OM1 in the future, partly because I've still got a lot of Micro Four Thirds lenses for that system. And um, yeah, I still, I still will try it. And it'll be interesting to see what improvements OM system do bring out for it. Although, as I said earlier, I'm not going to be holding my breath that it's going to be anything substantial because they're not going to want to take away the sales of their OM1 Mark II. I tried some other Sony cameras, so the A7C, I didn't really like the size of the viewfinder. I do, that's another good reason for the Sony A9. It has got a 3.7 million dot EVF, so I did love that about the Fujifilm X-H1. So I'm hoping the A9 is going to be just as good. I did consider the A7R4 and the A7IV as well, but ultimately, the stack sensor of the A9, the autofocus system, and just the more consistent hit rate from what my research was telling me in terms of meeting my needs in that regard is why ultimately at the moment I decided just, just to get the A9. 
I did really like though that the Sony a7 R5 is it has an amazing screen on it it has the ability to articulate forward as well as have a three-way tilt mechanism and if I stay with the Sony system I'm definitely going to be looking at getting cameras with that screen mechanism in the future because I think that is um, the best of both worlds I didn't go for that camera this time as well because it's very very expensive it's just come out so it's way 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 above my budget and it also has like a 61 meg sensor or something whereas 24 meg for me is still going to be more than what I'm normally used to so I don't feel like I need more than 24 meg at the present time I even feel as well with the Sony A9 I could probably do some X-Pan crops with that and still be happy with the resultant resolution and as well with the Sony A9, it does offer that APS-C mode as well. And even though it does crop in, I think, to 10, 11 meg resolution files, I'd be happy with that in a pinch because I've used 12 meg sensor cameras in the past. So I think my Ricoh GRD is only 8 meg. And then the Canon 5D and the Sony A7S are only 12 stroke 13 meg. So with a bit of cropping from those cameras, I'm down to 10, 11 meg anyway. So it'll be really interesting to experiment with that mode on the Sony A9, especially if I don't want to go for big, heavy telephoto lenses. If I'm happy with up to 200 mil, I might then in a pinch be able to, with the APS-C mode, take shots which are the equivalent of about 300 millimeters away. So yes, that's another good reason for the Sony system of cameras, which do offer that. And I guess that's one of the advantages of going for the R range in that you have the megapixels and even with the crop mode you're still probably getting 26 meg resolution files so it does allow you to do a lot more cropping in post but i just feel at the moment i'm happy with smaller files which hopefully will edit a lot better in lightroom and just finally as well i did look at fujifilm because i do i do like aspects of fujifilm but i just haven't really had much Good experience with the X-Trans sensor. I find that it makes greens go really mushy and, and I know you can use the the right software so you can use um, Iridium X-Transformer and you can use the function within Lightroom to, to get rid of the mushiness a little bit but again that's extra steps in my process that um, I don't necessarily uh, want to do and again it's going to like the denoise functionality i feel that it could change the the look and the character of an image and even though i do love the fuji three-way tilt screen and then there's a reason why i did take another look at maybe getting like an xt3 or something but but ultimately i don't think its autofocus system is as good as again the sony or the canon cameras so it's ultimately again why i've chosen to go and gives the Sony system a try. So that's all the other options I considered. So what next? I definitely feel, and I started planning this video before I bought the camera, but I do feel when I was planning this video and looking at all the, the pros and cons, it has helped crystallize the reasons for why the Sony A9 I feel is the right camera for me at the moment. I just need now to actually be brave enough to start using it in anger. As I said, I've already started to acquire some lenses, so that will help to shape what other lenses that I want to try. So I've already got the 85mm f1.8, so I'm looking at the Zeiss 55mm f1.8 as well. But then if I can get the 50mm f2.5 EF lens to work okay, that might stave off that purchase for a while while I use the system and see what other gaps I need to fill. Like I said, I might try and get a fast full frame lens to try and steer me away from medium format at the moment it'd be nice to just invest in one system moving forward where I can get all the types of shots that I want to get and the, the medium format options are pricey and heavy like even the GFX system and then the Mitocon 65mm that's a that's an expensive probably a £2,000 plus and probably a two kilogram plus solution as well and then obviously the Pentax 67 film camera and the 105mm f2.4 lens again that's a, a heavy 
an expensive setup. So I think I'd rather stick with Sony and see whether it can give me what I'm craving first before looking at other systems down the line. So I'm hoping the A9 will, will stop me from looking at getting a medium format camera. So just following on the back of that, yeah, I do want to try and get down to one system. I have managed to rationalize my digital cameras of late. I've got rid of the Nikon D200. I've got rid of my Olympus EM1 Mark II. And then maybe, depending on how I get on with the Sony A9, that might help me get rid of the Sony A7S, especially if the A9 is good in low light, high ISO areas. And then also as well, I'm hoping it might help me get rid of the Fujifilm XE1 and the 35mm f1.4 combo, and maybe even the Canon 5D, although I'm a little bit doubtful on that, because I, I, that's one area that I'm not sure how well the Sony is going to do in terms of producing pleasing images. I, I kind of do worry that they're going to require a little bit of work in Lightroom to get the images looking looking how I want them. Whereas, as I've talked about in the past, I do find that the Canon 5D images come out of the camera looking absolutely great and they don't really require any editing whatsoever. So, yeah, I'm a bit doubtful that the A9 is going to be good enough to replace the Canon 5D because that was my aim with the A7S because obviously the A7S is a lot lighter. Um, but that isn't to be. And if the A9 can do what the A7S can do, then there's no really, really real reason for keeping the A7S. Yeah, so that part concludes the first three videos that I filmed when I first got the Sony A9. The next video you'll see on my channel is when I actually took the camera out and a 24 to 70 f4 lens to do a bit of vlogging just to see how the camera would do. And to discuss my first experiences with with using the Sony A9 out in the field. After that, I'm planning to do a, a couple more videos because you might have picked up from before or in earlier parts. I don't currently have the Sony A9 in my possession. It's off being looked at by the company that I bought the camera from and their warranty service because I just wasn't getting the results. I was expecting from the camera, but I'll talk about that in a future part. So I hope you're enjoying this series of videos. If you've got any questions, then please feel free to put them into the comment section and I will answer them to my best of my ability. So as always, thanks for watching. Bye for now.